Hi, guys. <laughs> okay, let me know if you can hear me okay, if stream is looking good. And I know that chat comes in a little delayed, but I'm going to wait till I hear a thing from one of you. So it's time. It's time to get chatty. <laughs> you don't have to get chatty. Just let me know if you can hear us okay or hear me okay. Mm -hmm. What is going on with this? Okay, I've got it. Oh, great. I know that. Okay, so if I switched over to this other page, it does show me your chat, whereas this one doesn't for some reason. Hi, Esther. Hi, Stacy. Hi, Susan. Hi, Joby. Hi, guys. Okay. Shannon is with us today. She, oh wait, oh, because I paused myself. I was like, why is it frozen? It's not. It's just, never mind. Who cares? Um, <laughs> Shannon's with us today. She's brilliant. She's so talented. And hi, Lauren. Um, she was telling me just before we went on that she um, had some you know, as we all know, tech stuff happens. So she's not showing us her beautiful face, but she is going to show us her beautiful work. So Shannon, um, letter and illustrator, we're going to work on Procreate today. And um, otherwise, without further ado, I'm not going to sit here and stall for 10 minutes like I usually do with everybody. <laughs> Sorry, I do that. Um, I'll switch over to Shannon, get rid of my face. But if you guys have questions along the way, we're going to jump right in. Let me know or just put it in the chat and I'll make sure that she gets that. But let's roll, shall we? Hi, Shannon. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Okay, so today we are going to be painting a pumpkin, something like this, in appropriate. So it's going to be very simple, and I'm not really focusing on realism or being perfect. And I do want to create a lot of texture, so I'm going to be using some brushes from the default library in Procreate just to make things a little easier. So to start off, I'm going to create my canvas, and I usually always do screen size. I rarely use anything else. It's just a habit at this point, but that's what I'm gonna do today. So I'm choosing screen size, and then the brush that I'll be using for the majority of the painting is the turpentine brush. You can find it in the painting library. And as for colors, I usually don't like to use specific palettes. I usually just pick a color and then just go from there. So I think I'm gonna do that for this tutorial as well. So yeah, I'm gonna get started though. So we're gonna sketch out our pumpkin first using the 6B pencil and black. And a pumpkin is- 6B is my favorite. Uh, it is a circle, so that is what we're going to start with. And my sketch is not going to look pretty at all, but it's just a rough draft. So I'm going to try to make it as much as a pumpkin shape as I can. Okay, that looks about okay. And then we're going to divide it up. So first, you got to decide where you're going to put the stem, and I'm gonna put it somewhere here. So I'm just gonna make note of that. That's gonna be there. Mm, Shannon, I have an illustration question that okay. maybe people aren't thinking about, but why? And this, I know that you're gonna reveal this later, but in your planning stages, why do you place the stem? Um, let's see, how can I word this? more at the top but underneath and not right at the very top i know the answer but i want to <laughs> well hopefully it's the same answer i have because for me it's just about creating depth yep if i put it like right at the top it would just be like you're looking at the front view of the pumpkin and it's not as interesting as if you kind of add something behind to just show that it's a three-dimensional object totally that you're doing so it just adds so much more interest when you can have that yeah. sort of dimension in there so then the next step would be to kind of divide it up and i'm going to start with 
this first section, which is going to be the first thing that we're going to see, and it's probably going to be the thing that has like, the most details on it. So it can be any size. It really doesn't matter. And the line doesn't have to be perfect because, like I mentioned at the beginning, it's not about being perfect. It's just about creating something fun. And each section on either side is just going to be like an arc or kind of a partial oval. And I'm just going to keep adding them following the direction of the outer circle that I did. Yeah, and maintaining those like curves on the separations makes it so that it follows like the natural curve of your of your each edge so it makes it also look more dimensional doing it that way yeah and the lines don't have to be the same size the same weight each section can be a little bit different mm -hmm. because when you try to make things perfect they end up just looking a lot more incorrect mm -hmm. so i just completed with some other circle well semicircles at the back and for the stem, it's the same kind of shape, just in two different directions. And then maybe a slanted one at the top. So it looks, it looks a little bit confusing at this stage, but we're going to create a new layer and just refine it a little so that when we are painting it, it's not too distracting with all the excess layers. And again, these, this next sketch doesn't have to be precise either. It's just about creating each section and giving it a shape for you to follow when you're adding color. It already looks so good. Just the sketch alone. Thank you. I, actually, I don't know. Go ahead. I was a little hesitant about drawing it live because for some reason, every time I draw a pumpkin, it just looks either good or really bad. So I wasn't sure yeah. like, how this one would turn out. I know what you mean. I have that happen too. Where it's like, ooh, nailed it. Ooh, definitely don't know what I'm doing today. <laughs> I'm so just also, I'm also a really big fan of what sketches look like a lot of oh, times. Yeah, mm -hmm. a lot of times I would just sketch something and then when I add the color, it's like, I don't like it anymore. Mm -hmm. this just like so good. So I think, yeah, I'm gonna stay with how this is. And I'm just gonna get rid of that first one. And now I can see like right here is just a little uneven. So I'm just gonna fix that before I move on. So that it just looks a little bit more balanced with the other side. You know those like Disney animations with the characters and like you can see where they have that blue sketch pencil um, yeah. behind. Yeah. I would rather have something like that hanging on my wall than the finished one. <laughs> yeah. Especially just, when, when they do it like very geometric and it's very sharp as well. Mm -hmm. It's just so interesting like, because it feels like you almost get more that way because you're just... Like, look how much went into this. It's so cool. Lauren said, I appreciate other artists' processes and how they draw something out. Yeah, totally. It's so helpful to see. Okay, so the sketch is pretty much finished. You can add some leaves and stuff, but drawing leaves freehand is very tricky for me. It's even worse than trying to draw pumpkins. So Really? I Yes, it doesn't matter how much I try or how many tutorials or like books that I read. Some, they just look so inorganic and I don't like how they look, so. That's so interesting because I feel like for me, leaves are the easiest thing in the world. I love that you don't like them. <laughs> it's, I do. It's not that I do like them, but it just, I would have right, to right. Like, like do a lot of planning to find the correct composition. Mm -hmm. For That's some reason, so I can't draw them organically. They, they always look too structured. Huh. Interesting. 
So if you totally want to draw, you know, little vines and to like leaves, that's okay, but I'm just leaving it at this point. And now we can start painting. So I'm just going to create a new layer. And I think I'm going to put it underneath the sketch and lower the opacity of it so that, so that it shows through. Now I'm going to pick some colors. So this is kind of the palette that I used for the um, initial pumpkin that I drew that inspired this tutorial. And how I came about it was actually by accident. So I usually just start with one color and then as I go, if I need a lighter color, I would just use the color wheel, choose that color. And that is pretty much how I paint and procreate. It's not necessarily that I use reference images or anything like that. I just pick a color and go. So I'm just gonna be using these colors. It's essentially a very light, yellow that is going to be our first color then i added a lighter orange then i just kind of made the color a little bit darker as i went so i'm just using these colors for the pumpkin and these ones are for the stem and i picked it the same way i started with the green and then i went and got a lighter one and then a darker one and that's pretty much how my color palettes tend to evolve. So yeah, I'm having, good. having those like contrasted ones, even if they are like similar family um, and it's just, you know, value or whatever, it adds depth still. So that's even, you know, even more dimension that you can put in. Yeah. So I'm going to start with this lighter orange, well, it's more yellow and I'm using the turpentine brush and I just want to show you how it works on kind of a larger scale. So is the color visible? Yes. Okay. So, oh, okay. I'm still going to make it a little bit darker just so that I can show. So it's very textured. It's not a smooth brush and it looks similar to like an oil painting and that is kind of the effect that we're going for. So it's going to be on a much smaller scale, but I just wanted to show you guys how the texture looks so that you don't get a little bit too freaked out if it doesn't look like a smooth pumpkin when you're finished. So I'm going back for that liquor color and I'm just going to kind of fill in the first section of the pumpkin. You can work on the entire thing all together, but I feel like focusing on one section at a time just makes it a lot easier to get the dimension that you're looking for. So as I sketched, uh, not sketched, as I added the paint, I left just a little bit of the background, the white of the background showing through. And for each layer of color that we add, we're going to make sure that we leave some of the previous color behind and that is gonna help create even more depth. So after I finished adding that lighter color, I'm gonna go for the next one. And this brush, you don't have to press too hard on it. So I'm pressing very lightly so that it kind of blends into the center part that I'm leaving clear. Well, not clear, but with the previous layer showing through. And I'm also adding the color following that same direction of the outer lines. You guys in the chat are so quiet today, which tells me that you're working alongside, which makes me really happy. <laughs> so then I'm getting the next color. And pretty much just repeating that same thing, but making sure that I leave out the previous colors that I added.
this uh, next color is going to be a very dark one that I'm going to just use for areas that I want to suggest that there is a shadow, which in this case is mostly going to be the bottom section of, well, the bottom part of each of these sections. So I'm just going to add a little of that color. And I'm just adding, I'm making the brush a little bit smaller and adding just a little bit to the outer edges. And don't worry if you go outside the lines because this isn't about being perfect. It's just about playing with these brushes and seeing how well they work. And you can't really mess up if you go out the lines because the texture of this brush is really unique and it just looks like real paint rather than, you know, being a smooth text, a lot of smooth illustrators, illustration is just going to look like it has kind of that handmade feel. Yeah, and I like how much depth is showing, like, so inside those, um, near the outer edges, it's going to look like that's where the pumpkin is tucked into those, like, what do you call it? Rid like those divots, I guess. I have no idea. <laughs> but the movement, we're making movement happen. Yeah. So I'm just going to be repeating that for each of these uh, sections. And I think I'm going to blend these a little bit, but I'm going to use the same brush. And a cool trick that Procreate has is that if you want to switch brushes to one that you're using currently, you can just press and hold and it just switches for you without having to go search for the brush again. So that is pretty much my favorite uh, feature at the moment. And now there's so many awesome little shortcuts and gems in Procreate. Yeah. So when we're blending, I want to keep a lot of the texture. I'm not trying to get rid of it and create a smooth look. So I'm just going to drag the pencil in that same direction that I added the color very lightly. And I'm making sure that I'm not covering all of that area that I left out when I added the color, I'm just very lightly pulling all the colors together. And our first section is complete. And then putting those all, yes, I can't wait. I can't wait on the fly to that. I love watching it come together. And I think it's interesting that you're doing them separately. Um, I think that it does give you a lot more visual control. Um, yeah, I feel so too, because when you try to work on the entire thing and then it just gets- Muddy kind of. Yeah. And it's really hard to just see even the sketch. I mean, yeah, the initial sketch. And it just is a little bit confusing. So I'm just gonna work on each section by itself and I'm going to create a new layer for each one. You don't necessarily have to, but I'm just doing this just in case because I don't really feel like you can really mess up when you're doing mm -hmm. this tutorial. So, but I'm just doing it just in case. So I'm starting all over again. Oops. And starting with the lighter color first. And I'm following the same direction as that outer line for this section. Stacy said she hadn't used the turpentine brush before. It is a really fun one because it's like, it can mimic a lot of different types of texture, but I feel like it's very similar to like, um, kind of like a, like a watery brush mixed with acrylic paint. Um, yeah, I think so too. 
at first I was going to use the oil painting brush, but that one is a little bit trickier. I feel mm -hmm. like this one is much easier to paint with. It has a better with, flow. Yeah, without it frustrating you. Yeah. Another fun brush that could be used is actually your gouache brush. I really love using that as well, but it didn't have the texture that I really wanted uh -huh. this tutorial. So that's why I kind of skipped and just did use the um, turpentine brush. Yeah. But I really the flow of your gouache brushes as well. Yeah, they're similar, but I feel like this one has almost like a more of a sharpness to it that you'd want. Yeah, I think that's it. The, the harsh edges. They have, yeah, more texture. Because gouache like is such a flat. I know it's digital, but either way, like it's it's much more of a flat finish. Yeah. But it's nice to actually, it is nice to use default brushes. I think so many people are like, wow, I have so many brush sets and how many more do I need to buy to do the thing? And you can actually do most everything with default brushes as it turns yeah. out. I actually found myself using them a lot recently. And it's nice to just see just how far you can push them and what you can do with them because this one brush I'm going to be using to both paint and smudge. And I think I will erase with it as well if I need to erase. So mm -hmm. it's like one brush and I can do this entire painting rather than having to switch back and forth. Mm -hmm. So it kind of makes painting a lot easier for certain things. So again, I've added all my colors and I'm just going to lightly pull that brush along the colors and because the brush is a little too big i am getting some white being pulled into the color so i just have to lower the opacity a bit and start back over with the smudging esther is saying that she loves the blending and finds it very satisfying yeah it actually really is and I find myself painting with this brush a lot at night when I'm watching TV. Mm -hmm. For a while, I wasn't using Procreate and I was a little bit frustrated with how mechanical it feels sometimes. So mm -hmm. when I found this brush, it was like, it feels good to be doing the motions that you would do if you were using like a real paint brush. So I've been really enjoying using this brush a lot. It's like painting without the mess. <laughs> yeah. And I've also been trying not to undo as much because the feature is there and it's very tempting sometimes, but that kind of stops my creativity a little bit, just being able to undo too much. So I'm trying not to do that as often. Gosh, I know. And it just becomes such a normal, like, quick trigger for our hands to do yeah oh it's turning out so pretty uh, yeah uh when you get to these uh sections that are more kind of in the background you don't necessarily need to leave as much of that space, the lighter space in the center, because most likely, well, it depends on where your light source is. And mine is gonna be 
hitting mostly the top front of the pumpkin. So these uh, back sections aren't going to have as much of that later area. So I don't have to leave as much of the color from the previous layer as I'm building up the colors. Okay, you guys, are you following along? <laughs> because I've never seen the chat this quiet. It makes me happy, don't get me wrong. She's mesmerizing us. I know the chat's coming in <clears throat> later than when I asked, but that's okay. I think it's like 30 seconds-ish behind, which feels like a lifetime sometimes. I know it does. It's like so meditative, especially if you're sitting and doing it while doing something mundane, like watching television at night, which I'm very familiar with. <laughs> Yay, I'm glad you're following. Too busy painting, yay. Definitely know what you mean about the messy part. I'm in a wheelchair and can only use my left hand and procreate has been a godsend. Totally, yeah. It's like, it just makes things so much more accessible. Okay, I've got a question that people might not realize they have. <laughs> um, how do you decide what areas to leave open with the yellow part showing through? I think it's is just like uh, where the light will be hitting the pumpkin, kind of in my mind. I just imagine the light shining just at those parts. Mm -hmm. So I'm just leaving them. And sometimes it's just like trial and error as well because when I first uh, start painting something not necessarily just this pumpkin but sometimes when it's because I don't really like following rules exactly I would just much prefer to just start creating something and if it doesn't look good just try to figure out where I went wrong so if I'm painting something I don't necessarily look at references to see where the highlights are are I would just kind of Imagine where I think they are and just put them there. If they look wrong, I would just try to move it around and just have fun with it because I like the process of creating. So I don't mind having to try something a few times before I get it. So it's just a lot of trial and error. Okay, so I forgot to blend this section over here. So I just had to go back and kind of blend them together. Okay. 
See, even I'm quiet. I feel mesmerized. <laughs> Like, when do I not talk? Unheard of. Do you have birds? Like, are you? Oh, <laughs> sorry. That's next door. I um, love it. Yeah, I, I didn't even realize how noisy they were till I started re- till I started recording. Uh, and then the you hear, and then I was like hearing all the birds in the background. It was like, oh, I think and it's I, so relaxing to hear the birds. I love it so much. Yeah, um, because at first there were, I think there were on the other side of the house, but then like. A few weeks ago, my cousin, she's sort of next door, she moved them to this side. And then it's like, the only time they're quiet is <laughs> later in the afternoon time. Uh-huh. And it's just really peaceful for a yeah. little while. But I've gotten accustomed to them. So it's only when I'm like supposed to record something that I realize that they're there. I love it. Makes me so happy. Your cat's looking for the birds. <laughs> oh, I wonder if yeah. that's what I wonder if that's what Franny's doing because she's in the window right now, just looking outside. <clears throat> yeah, my cats actually used to go over there and just be like staring at them. I think they probably still do it too, but oh, they're so cute. <clears throat> Excuse me. Franny, do you hear birds? <laughs> oh, you say hi. I don't know if you guys heard, but she has the cutest little squeaks. During, I'm surprised she's not, but she went to her food bowl, but when I sit at my desk, her new thing, well, I guess it's not new, but it's like, she's gotten even not worse. Cause it's not bad, but she's gotten worse about it basically. And she crawls onto me and she makes me lean back. And then I have to hold her like a baby and she nuzzles her little head under my chin. And it's so sweet. And it's like, then I have to do everything one-handed and I'm like trying to reach my keyboard and trying to still work. I'm like, literally like every minute matters with how busy I get sometimes, but she, this girl, this little kitty cat, man, I just love her. Yeah. I know what you mean. Mine are just really invasive. Yeah. I'm so surprised that like they aren't in the video as yet because they always seem to know I'm doing something. I know they always do. And it's like, when you want to give them attention, they're like, no, thanks. Yeah. I'm busy. Right. No. So I probably would not be interrupted. But it's really hard to do things sometimes with them. Mm hmm. Okay. So I think I'm actually going to merge the layers together because I don't see anything happening that I would need to kind of change. So I'm just going to merge them. But I'm actually not liking how dark this is. But I don't want to change the color as yet. So I'm just going to continue. I'm going to continue what I was doing and see if I like it when it's finished. I like it when it's not finished. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Yeah, I'm going to do the back part first and then leave the stem for last. I 
And for this one, I can actually work on all three at the same time because they're not the main focus. So I can just add color to them. And I'm making sure to follow the direction of the lines for them. Rather than doing the same direction at the front, I'm just going towards the back. Oh, Esther, your dog snuggles under your chin. That's so cute. Billy will snuggle anyway she can. She like shoves your arm or your hand out of the way so that she can get underneath it. And she tries to get like, she's, <laughs> she's such a creep. She comes up and she gets as close to your face as possible and just stares. Like she's, <laughs> she's truly a creep. <laughs> It's so weird. But she loves breath. So I think she's trying to get in my mouth. She'll, that's the thing. Like she, if people let her kiss them on the mouth, they become her best friends ever. And I'm like, don't you let her do that because you're in for a nasty addiction. <laughs> she won't stop. Ah, I love how it's getting all finished. And it's interesting, it's oh. interesting too, because like the, the different brushes would make, like using a different brush would make this look like a totally different technique, but with the same color, same technique, same everything, it would just like, there's so many opportunities to make this look styled. Yeah. Uh, so the color for these back parts, these back sections, is going to be darker compared to the ones at the front because you're going to have the shadow from the stem that is going to be cast on these sections. And they're not gonna be getting much light. So you don't need to leave much of that lighter color showing through. And at this section here, just where it meets the stem, I would just suggest that you go as dark as you can by just applying the full pressure of the brush so you can get that really dark color. That's a good point. I never thought about um, when I've done this stuff, I haven't thought about casting shadow specific to the stem. Yeah, I just think it is not necessary, but it's just no, another it's, way to yeah, add that. Just to enhance it even more. I like it. Yeah, and it just kind of makes everything a little bit more cohesive. Mm -hmm. So... I'm just going to blend those back colors. Together. Okay. 
So we're almost kind of finished with adding color. We just have to do the stem. And I'm just gonna hide the sketch just to see if we captured like the basic shape and everything. And now we can erase and I'm gonna use that same brush. So just gonna press on the eraser and it's gonna switch to the same turpentine brush. And I'm going to erase away some of kind of the color that got outside of the lines. And I'm also just trying to shape the pumpkin a little bit. I'm still leaving like just the little pieces of texture. I'm not making it smooth. I love a textured edge. Yeah, Esther said it would have been harder to get a texture without a brush like that and made for more work. It totally would have. There's a way. There's always a way to everything, but yes. You're much more patient than I am, Shannon. <laughs> I'm like, watch, I guess maybe not. Like if I'm multitasking, then I would have no, no problem cleaning up edges, but gosh, I just get so impatient so much. <laughs> that is kind of me too, but I don't know. I just felt like doing it in this tutorial because I don't think for the ones that I did before that I actually cleaned up, the entire thing. I mostly just did the bottom because mm -hmm. I had to, but I just decided to do the entire thing for this one. I like so, it. I'm going to leave the stem to last because that is my least favorite part to do. I'm just going to add a little bit more depth and then kind of just show the separation of each section a little bit. And to do that, I'm using a very dark red color almost. It looks a little bit like brown, but it's not brown. It's very dark red. And I'm going to create a new layer on top. This one I'm going to do on a new layer because there might be certain parts that I need to erase. And I don't want to erase that all that pumpkin that we just drew. Mm -hmm. So I'm using the same brushes. And I'm just going to where the sections separate and adding that color. I think I added too much because I want it to be a little more subtle. I don't want it to be too um, bold. And you can use the sketch to help you if you need to, but I can see where the colors are supposed to separate. And I'm adding this light on the outside of this front section. And then I'm going to use um, the smudge brush. I'm just gonna try to blend it into the other side of the line, not on the front section, but on the section to the left of the line. This part, did you say this part is like not your favorite part? Oh, no, the, um, the stem, not this part. Is oh, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. 
this part is my favorite because it's like, wow, you now see that totally pop. Yeah, I like this part. It's just, the stem is a little tricky for me, so that's just why I'm leaving it for last. Mm -hmm. This part's my favorite. Yeah. It's like you were adding dimension, but now it's like, bam, dimension. Here it and is. It's just one simple step and it just changes the entire thing. Mm hmm. Okay, so for this one, I added a little too much color. So I'm just gonna erase just some of that that we just blended. And we just re-blend it. And yeah, it's a little more subtle now. I may need to add a little bit more. If it is just, oops, that's one of the cats. <laughs> um, so if you, I can't remember what I was saying. Okay. If you added too much of the darker color, it just starts to look too cartoony, I think. So just a little bit of the darker color can go a long way. I love the dark part, I love it. <laughs> Stacy said, I like how you started with a, with, wait, woo. I like how you started right away with the texture brush. I usually start with a flat color and add texture later. Well, I would usually do that too before I decided to start using this brush, but it was like killing two birds with one stone. So I'm going to be using this as much as I can now. And it's really fun to practice as well because it really helps to make you loosen up a little bit and enjoy the process rather than just trying to paint something exactly as it is. Mm -hmm. I've done it both ways. I used to start with texture and lately I've started with a flat brush and then added texture as overlay. But I mean, I think it's like, you just kind of experiment and then you go through different phases of doing things differently. Um, cause it was like for like four years that I did it started with texture and all of a sudden, who am I? I don't know. <laughs> well, I guess that's, that's it too. Cause you kind of get bored of things after a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Especially if it doesn't challenge you like, Oh, it used to. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh. Totally. Even when it's zoomed in, it looks so detailed.
See, in my laziness, <laughs> I think I'm like, gosh, what you could do here is select the one on the left and duplicate it and flip it and then put it on that side. Yeah. I actually did that as well. Uh, when I was just redoing this to see how long it would actually take, because I wasn't sure mm -hmm. if it would be quick or not. I actually did that for the for these sections. I used the warp feature and everything, but it didn't feel yeah, it doesn't feel okay. right. So I didn't I skipped that part because it was a lot quicker, but Okay, so oh, okay. You, you guys know, like, obviously that Procreate makes tracing easy. Um, I had a piece I had been working on recently. And so I'll pull in, like, if it's an animal, for example, I'll pull an animal and I'll just like how Shannon started with drawing, like the general shape at first proportions for animals, unless I'm really concentrating are just kind of tricky. And so I brought in this like dodo bird <laughs> and I was um, just like finding like the circle of the body and then like, okay, this is oblong here. This is more round here. And she looks at me and she's like, you're not talented enough to draw a bird. <laughs> I was like, how dare you? Yeah, I could draw a bird. I just want to skip the step of trying to figure out dimension. She's like, mm-hmm. And so it was a huge challenge, like from her to me. And I was like, fine. And so I got rid of it because I was working next to her while she was playing her video game. <laughs> and uh, I was like, fine, I'll draw this stupid bird. And I drew it. And I'll tell you what, like I enjoyed the entire process way more. And I was so proud of the finished piece because I was like, okay, I just took the time to actually like apply myself and not cheat. <laughs> yeah. It was just way better. I used to do that a lot with flowers and leaves since I can't get them done. But yeah. But it's just, I don't like how unnatural they feel when I draw them. Mm -hmm. I would just rather use a reference. Someday I will get it how I want it. But for now, I am going to stick with using that method. I mean, we have to find our resources, you know, and what works, works. Uh, okay. So, you know, when you like look away for like 20 seconds and then you look back and you're like, oh my gosh, look at this. Like every time that that happens. So wait, this is actually a good lesson that I throw out way too much. So you guys are probably just going to hear me being a broken record, but whenever you're feeling like stuck because you've been staring at your own work for way too long, if you just like get up and go get tea or pee or something, take the dog out and then come back with fresh eyes, you're going to be like, wow, look at what I am creating. This is so good. Yeah. So this is all you need to do. Mm hmm. Lucy, no, no, stop doing it. I don't know if you guys saw my Instagram story yesterday, but Lucy was just sitting there spending some quality time licking the wall. And right now, it's like her, the noises that she makes when she's licking obsessively is so cringy. <laughs> and she was just doing it to her paws, of course, which isn't as weird as the wall, but sometimes she licks you know, the side of the ottoman or the side of the couch or the side of the chair or the wall or the air. <laughs> oh yeah, Susan, that's a really good idea. And that happens to me a lot. <laughs> 
where your shadow lines or anything really is too dark. And instead of like sitting there doing recolor or, you know, restarting or whatever, um, you can just reduce the opacity on that layer and it works really well. And that my friends is why we love working in layers. Yeah, I think that's the way I did it this way as well. I like it. Okay, so I finished adding in the shadows for all the sections. And now I'm just going to add in that shadow from the stem. And I'm just going to add at these sides. And I'm also going to add some right here, which should be kind of just a shadow from this front section of the pumpkin that will be on the shadow. Uh, on the stem itself. Okay, so I think the pumpkin is finished for the most part. Um, uh, yeah. I think yeah, it looks so good. I think I, I, I like how it looks at this point. The only thing that I'm trying to decide whether to do or not is to add in a little bit more yellow just so that it will kind of bounce off this side. But I'm not sure as yet. So I'm gonna finish the stem first and then make my decision. So the stem, I'm not sure how realistic it's gonna look because I haven't looked at the stem of a pumpkin to kind of figure out, I should have, but I'm just gonna see how it turns out. So I'm creating a new layer and I'm going to do it behind the uh, shadows that we just did because I already put the shadow for the stem right here. So when I do it underneath, it's just gonna show up on top of it automatically. And I started with the lightest green is more like a yellow green, like a light lime green color. And I'm gonna put back the sketch and color it in. So I'm done with the sketch and I'm going to create a new layer for the next set of color just in case I don't like how it turns out. And I'm just going to kind of add colors similar to how I did for the pumpkin, just following the shape of the outer lines. And this top section is just going to be a circular kind of thing. And I think those two colors should be 
enough. And we need to just make it a little darker around the edges. I mean, I have to say, Shannon, this is looking pretty good. <laughs> like you said, it, you don't know how to make like, or, you know, getting it too realistic, but like that texture and it's, it's looking pretty good. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I mean, I would never think that that was a hard, harder part. I don't know if it's hard or it's just that I can't visualize, you know how. Yeah. Those, yeah. Those yeah. I can't really visualize it and I should have looked at reference, but I really didn't feel like it. So I'm just using the smudge blood brush to blend everything together. And now to add in those sections. I think the shadow that I added behind these sections is kind of helping me see how I can add in the, the darker lines. I'm not sure what to call it, but I'm just gonna draw a few lines kind of in that same direction as that line is it's gonna have the effect that this shadow has. And then on this side, I'm gonna draw one going this way. And I think I'm gonna just blend on one side. And I think that should be enough to kind of give the effect that I want. Yeah, and then right when you think it's not going to look more realistic, you add those two lines and suddenly it's like another, I have to do it again. Bam! Okay, one more. <laughs> Texture time. Texture city. Okay, I think I think I, I think I got it done correctly. Now, what I also did was just I added a little bit of that darker orange color. Um, yeah, so I also, yeah, I tried that. I'm not sure if you can see it, but because red and green are complementary colors, usually when you kind of use that to kind of work with shadows and stuff, it makes the piece look a little bit more cohesive. So I use that same color that I use down here, just in these shadow areas. It just feels like together. I don't even think you can really see it on camera, but it just adds a little bit more mm -hmm. uh, depth to it. I'm just going to go back and blend in that shadow that I did right here just a little bit so that it blends into the stem a little bit more. So 
So the main, yeah, the main thing everything is done. It's just the finishing touches that we can add. I'm trying to think about what I want to do next. I mean, I don't even know if you need anything next. <laughs> it's so good. I mean, of course you can, because I feel like every single detail just keeps adding an awesome element, but yeah. Okay, so I think I'm, I'm going to add in some more yellow, just a little bit. So I'm creating a new layer just above the pumpkin, and I'm going to go about for the lighter yellow and just add in a little bit. And I'm gonna blend it out as well. Okay, I think I'm happy with it. I'm just gonna add just a little bit more texture. And I'm going to use the lighter yellow color. And I'm gonna switch brushes, also in the same brush set. Yeah, I'm gonna choose dry brush. And I'm just going to add, I'm doing this on a new layer. I'm just going to add just a few like scratches. It almost is like just a scratch of color. I don't know how else to call it. Like how else to kind of describe what is happening. I'm gonna try to zoom in and hopefully you can see what I mean. Mm hmm I like that a lot. So I'm going to add it to all the sections. Following the same shape of the lines. And I think that is also what kind of helps everything to look more realistic, just keeping everything in the same general shape rather than kind of doing circular motions or just adding color randomly. That wasn't me, that was Lucy. <laughs> um, Susan said, which brush is it that you're using for the scratching? Oh, is the dry brush, isn't the same brush set? It is, I hope you can see it, I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay. No, no barking. No barking. No, please. And I'm gonna add some of that same texture to the stem. So I created a new layer on top and I'm going to add it not in the shadow areas, on the areas that are kind of just next to it. And for the top, I'm gonna to switch to the darker green since it's pretty light. I use the darker green to add those scratches. Shannon, do you see how cool that looks? Even zoomed, like super zoomed in, it looks so good. Yes, and I can't even believe that I just did it. Right? Uh, I, I don't know. Like, I feel like when I'm not trying to create is when I create the best.
I know what you mean. I feel that way too. I think Plus, the only thing so that I, I'm going to do now is add some splatters because I just love adding splatters to everything. And the brushes that I'm going to use are from your grit set. So it's the TPL grit brush set, I think. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to use both the dense splatter and just the splatter brush. And I'm doing all this on a new layer above. I'm using the same colors that I added color with for the painting. Because there's a lot of yellow, I don't think I need to add more, I mean, not yellow, orange. I don't need to add more orange. So I'm gonna use green. Use that one. And okay, this one is a little too well. So I'm going to have to decide where I put them. This is probably the step that I do the most on doing at because you don't want the splatters to distract the main design. So you kind of have to just play around with the placement and because the brushes are so random, it's a little difficult, but it's also fun at the same time because after you've done like the long painting, it's like, they're just wrapping up. So you can spend a few extra minutes just trying to figure out where you're gonna put your splatters. I really like how that looks there. And I'm gonna put some just on this side. Okay. Then I'm going to add the lighter green. On two opposite sides. And if you're adding spiders and you feel like just they're too distracting, you can always just put them in the background. And that way you have splatters, but your drawing or painting is still in the foreground. You can just add a few other colors. Okay, I don't like how those look. So I'm switching my brushes, my brush to the dense splatter now. And Okay, I think I'm gonna use the lighter color and I'm actually going to make it bigger. Yeah, so it's just playing around with the brushes and seeing how the splatters will look at different parts. <laughs> Teresa just came on because I messaged her, I was like, I'm very surprised that you're not in Shannon's live right now because I wanted to give her um, shame. <laughs> but now she's in here. And I think it's so funny that she's like, <laughs> I don't know. anyway, she is talking. To, I was like, the chat's so quiet without you. Well, Esther's doing a great job though. <laughs> but yes, the splatter does look absolutely amazing. Okay, I think I find uh, I finally found the splatter layout that I want. This is usually the, the part that I think about the most. And it's really surprising because you don't really need to think about splatters. But for some reason, I just need it to look a little bit messy, but still not too messy.
And if you want, you can even add a background color. Um, it will have to be something that doesn't distract from the painting. So it can be a complementary color, but I already have. Okay, so yeah, I can use the blue. Whoa, let me see. A very light blue, maybe. And a quick tip, if you're not sure what a complementary color is of what you're using, you can just go opposite of your current color on the color wheel and that is just what your complementary color is. So if I'm on orange, the complementary color would be blue. So you can just choose it like that. I know that there's also I think one of these, yeah. This also helps you to choose complementary colors. This is just, you go into Harmony and I think, yeah, you can choose it right here. I don't really use this feature much. I just know that it's here. And when you, when you tap on a color, it just shows you the complementary color right here. So I'm going to use blue. I'm going to use the very light blue for the background and just see how it looks. You can change the background color right here, but I like to just create a new layer and drag and drop the color. I'm not sure Ooh. if you could. I know you're saying I'm not something, but I really like that. <laughs> well, I'm not sure if it's showing up well on the camera or not mm. because I use a very light color. So I'm not sure if. No, it is showing up. I don't know if it's going to be like the exact same hue, but it looks really good. Okay. So that is one way that you can kind of go for the back when you can do something complimentary. Another option, and this is why I like to create layers so that I can kind of choose in the end. Or if I don't want to choose, I can save both options. I would go with a lighter version of one of the colors in the painting. So I would go with a lighter green. So just drag and drop. So that would be another way to choose. And then there is the option of a lighter orange. Esther said, just for the heck of it, try black because it'd be very Halloween-y. <laughs> okay. No, I think, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Also, so because, also fun. Yeah, really fun. But you can see that I did have some spots right here. So if I went with the darker background, I would have to go in. Just in case anyone wants to kind of do this and are worried about those black areas showing through, you can create a new layer and just go for the lighter color that is supposed to be underneath or even white. And oh, I think I'm on this for her brushes still. And you can just go in and oops, add your color in. If you're going with a darker background, you're just gonna have to go in and add your color to those later areas. And you should be good. But I don't know which one I like most. I know it's hard because like they have totally different vibes. I've been really into like muted dark colors lately, like a muted black, not quite charcoal, but like, just faded black, but I've also been into that with, I mean, that light blue, I was a real big fan of. I think I like that one the most too, is between that and the yellow, well, orange, but it looks more yellow to me. I don't know. <laughs> Decisions. 
but the good thing about poker is that you don't have to like choose exactly. I can literally save all of them. And if I want to print it, I can print all three, four colors. I don't know. Mm hmm. Esther, so you know, she said, I've never seen the color leaking through like that before. And that's because it's done um, when she initially with started drawing, it's with a texture brush. Yeah. And so and the that's the one like either exciting thing or downside of starting with texture brushes because um, there will be some transparency or there can be some transparency. Um, so if you want to prevent it all together, like Shannon said, you can always add a layer below and then just fill in that spot with like what a back, what your initial background color was. So it's what you thought you were going to get or starting with a solid brush and then adding texture later. Yeah, because this brush is actually really, um, I'm going to show you. So I'm using white. And I'm just going to show you that it's very transparent. Like you can, it's not a solid brush. So you can see that the color will still show through. And some areas are actually gray because it's like not fully opaque. And I'm going to compare it to like the airbrush, which is just like the solid, it's a solid color. So if you're using the texture brushes, it's going to have that effect. And I actually like that about it. Oops, so I just, okay. So I, I, I colored on my black background. Okay, I'm back to where I'm supposed to be. Oh my gosh, again, I looked away at the chat and I typed something back and then I look again at the art and I'm like, oh my gosh, that looks so good. <laughs> like if you just look away and then you look back, it's like, bam, so cool. I'm not gonna do a big loud bam again, don't worry. And one of the weird things about perfect is that like the overhead angle of how you see something and then how you see it when you're just sitting right here drawing is two completely different things. So I know mm -hmm. that like when I get up and I look at it at that same angle, I'm probably going to realize how you are seeing it. But it's really weird that this is how it turned out. I had no idea they would look like this. I love that how it just kind of organically evolves. You guys, if you end up doing, um, if you followed along, which I know several, a handful of you did, um, be sure to tag Shannon, but also myself, cause I really want to see it. But, uh, on Instagram, her Instagram is below, um, in the text and share it because this is such a perfect festive, um, illustration for right now. Yeah. And actually, I wanted to do something that was relatively simple and achievable for anyone. Because sometimes I know that my ideas are a little wild and not beginner friendly. So I chose something that was easy enough to follow. And at certain points, I think it kind of blanked out. And that's usually what happens when I create. So... I don't know, I think I really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. That is kind of what happened. Yeah. It was, very, yeah. it was very meditative for me as well. Yeah, it's so nice. So, gosh, thank you, Shannon, so much. This is so beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Um, as you said, definitely putting the stump at the top would not have been as impressive. <laughs> I don't really know. <laughs> but yeah. Um, gosh, Shannon, thank you so, so, so much. I love it. It's so beautiful. It's so pretty. So you guys make sure to, um, to connect with Shannon on Instagram. And also I connected her, um, website link that goes to all of her links. <laughs> and then you can also see the rest of her tutorials on our design team. Um, so those links are below and, uh, gosh, otherwise, yeah, share, share what you did as well. I can't wait to see everyone's interpretations.
Okay, thanks so much, Shannon. Thank you, bye everyone. Bye.